We are a little church, but we had a big heart. We're going to begin this morning with meditation and prayer. Let us examine our life by way of 1 John 1 and 9, naming all, all known sins probably to the Father. That way our mind is clear and we're able to worship God with a clear conscience. As a reminder for those of you to have your cell phone, please turn them off where it will not be a distraction to you. In preparation, let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. We come this morning with our heads bowed to thank you for giving us the wonderful opportunity that you allowed us to assemble ourselves to worship you today in truth and in spirit. We just ask the Heavenly Father for your anointing to be upon our worship service that it would be holy and acceptable in your eyesight. For we thank you, for we ask in Christ's name is our prayer. Amen. Will the congregation please repeat after me? Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, steady to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The word of truth this morning is going to come from a number of passages of scripture in the subject of our lesson in PCPD after me, the walking dead. Amen. And they have a TV series out that's called the walking dead. But the more I thought about that, I realized that it's not just a TV series. Amen. Amen. That is in reality that many folks uh, is walking with their eyes wide open, but they are spiritually dead as a doorknob. And Revelation 3, this is where the heart of the lesson was coming from, verse 1 and 2. Let us turn to it and those that are joining us by way of YouTube. We pray that you have exercised the grace provision of 1 John 1 and 9, naming all known sins privately to God the Father. That way you are in fellowship, ready to learn the word of God. All right, here in verse 1 of chapter 3, uh, let us read. Unto the angel read of the church of Sardis. These things said he that have the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain 
that are ready to die. For I have not found our works perfect before God. Amen. God is saying, I know thy works. And I know that you have a name. You live it. But yet at the same time, you are dead. Hypocrisy is spiritual death. Amen. And there's a whole lot of Christians who are hypocrites. They are spiritually dead. Amen. See, when you know what God says and you refuse to obey God, number one, that's a sin. And number two, you are a hypocrite because you claiming that you are God's child, but yet you're not walking right with God. Amen. Now, the problem with the church of Sardis was hypocrisy, infested with sin, looking good on the outside, but so corrupt on the inside. And many people today fit this bill. And we have a reference in Romans 8, 6 through 8, turn to it. Many folks fit this bill. They look good on the outside. They worship the Lord. They go to worship anyway. They in church every Sunday. They look like a Christian on the outside. But they are so corrupt in the mind. Here in verse 6 of chapter 8, 7 and 8, let us read. For to be carnally, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is the subject of the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh is a walking dead person. Amen. Because they are a hypocrite. Talking about Christians, a carnal mind. See, Satan loves better, nothing better, than to get your eyes off of Christ. And it's his subjective by any means necessary. Amen. Satan knows exactly which the right buttons to push in your life to get your eyes off of Christ. Amen. See, when we come to worship, nothing, nobody can say or do if we have our eyes and focus on God can get our eyes off of Christ. Amen. Because number one, I'm not looking at you. My eyes is on God. And that's where I come to worship. S outline one, spiritual death. Spiritual death is a consequence of the fall. Go to Romans. We're in the book of Romans already. Fifth chapter. Turn back to the fifth chapter. Verses 12 through 15. Spiritual death. See, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, and God gave a commandment, don't eat of this tree. And when Adam bit of the forbidden tree, he say, Death is going to occur, but he didn't know what kind of death it was. He was thinking in physical death, and that's why the snake was able to come through. Satan was able to come through the snake. See there, you're not going to die. But see, he didn't tell him that there's a spiritual death there. So Adam and Eve died spiritually when they partook of the forbidden tree. Now here in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 12. Let us read. Wherefore, read. Wherefore, As by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passing upon all men, for that all have sinned. Stop right there. One man, Adam. The sin nature was activated when Adam made that conscious choice. Verse 13, for until read. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. 
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the fig of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, such more grace of God and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. So now we are born into this world spiritually dead. Physically alive, but spiritually dead. Not until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then one can be born again. Now, to be spiritually dead implies unbelievers are alienated from the life of God and destitute of the Holy Spirit. Unbelievers are spiritually dead. Unbelievers. And we have a reference in the book of Ephesians 4. Turn to it. Now, we have a whole lot of Christians that act just like unbelievers. They are out of fellowship. When you are part of the royal family and you refuse to walk right with God, you are that Christian that have made a conscious choice to disobey God. Here in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, 18 through 19, let us read, have and read, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto the lasciviousness to work all cleanliness with greediness. Amen. These are spiritual dead folks because they are alienated from God. And we have a whole lot of folks that's walking dead. The walking dead. A whole lot of people today fits this bill. Because of his or her sinful mindset, he or she is incapable of knowing and enjoying God. We got some references here. Timothy, John, turn to 1 Timothy 5, 6. Because of their mindset, they're incapable of knowing God. They're less, they're less enjoying God. Is nonsense to them. All right. Verse 6. Uh, let's read. But she read. That liveth in pleasure is dead. While she's living. Amen. But she that liveth in pleasure. Is spiritually dead. While she liveth. So she's walking around spiritually dead. She is classified as the walking dead. Amen. Because pleasure, the details of life, everything else is important to him or her. Amen. And God is not important at all. So now they are classified in this category as the walking dead. Go to 1 John 3. 1 John, 3rd chapter, 11 through 15. Because of the mindset, they're incapable of knowing God or enjoying God. Verse 11 says, for this read. The message that ye have heard from the beginning, that ye should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate ye. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because of love of the brother. But that he that... Abided in there. Stop right there. 
For we know, in other words, we have passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. But he that loveth not his brother abideth in spiritual death. They are spiritually dead. Then verse 15 says, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. In other words, there's no spiritual life abiding in a murderer. So now the person that hates his brother is just like a murderer. Amen. Chapter 5 of 1 John 10 through 12. Let us read. He that believeth read. On the Son of God have witness in himself. He that believeth not God have made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son have life, and he that hath not the Son of God have not life. So now an unbeliever does not have the life of God is because they are spiritually dead. They are walking dead folks. And we got a whole lot of folks in the United States that are walking dead folks. Amen. You know, they had that show, that TV series called The Walking Dead. And one of the things that interests me, if a person is already dead when you shoot them, uh, how can you kill a dead person? Amen. And I understand you have to shoot him in the head. That's TV. Amen. <laughs> That's TV. But you shoot him anywhere else, they're going to keep on coming. Amen. Now, listen, the only way that you can cure spiritual dead folks is that they themselves is going to have to accept Christ in the head. Amen. They're going to have to accept Christ in the head. And then they'll be alive. See? <laughs> <laughs> the fruits of spiritual death are dead works. The fruits of spiritual death. When a person is spiritually dead, their work is dead works. Might come on the human good. See, there's a whole lot of folks down there at Georgia or Brown feeding the homeless or passing out turkey. But if they are spiritually dead, well, that work is dead. That's called dead works. They're just a human good thing that they did. Hebrews 6 chapter, turn to it. Let's see what the Holy Spirit has to teach us here about dead works, 1 through 8. All right. Let us read. Therefore, read. Therefore. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ... Let us go on to perfection. And again, the foundation of repentance from dead works of the faith toward God. Stop right there. Underline foundation of repentance. There's no emotion in repentance. In other words, God telling us don't feel sorry for what has happened in the past. What's done is done. Amen. Just simply ask for forgiveness and keep moving. But now he's saying, that don't, you don't have to go back and keep throwing a fish out there in the water to catch them all over again. Amen. It's time to grow up. He said, now, leaving the principles of the basic doctrine of Christ, let us move on to uh, spiritual maturity. Verse 2 says, of the doctrine of baptism, read. Of the doctrine of baptism and the laying on our hands and the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For if it be possible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good work of God and the powers of the world to come, if they should fall away to renew them again into the repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bring forth herbs meat. For them to whom it is dressed receive blessings from God. 
But that which beareth the thorns and bears is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. In other words, the farmer, when it rains and it brings a good crop, that's a blessing from the Lord. But if that same land that the farmer has formed bring uh, cuckabirds and everything, it can't nothing grow. The land is rejected, so the farmer would burn up the land to start all over again. The same way with here when Christians who have heard the word of God, amen, and they have rejected it, the word of God. He says it's impossible for them to be renewed because, number one, Christ died one time. You can't keep going to the cross to giving you another opportunity. Amen. Because, see, now, if God decided to call you home and you have rejected Christ, that's it. That's it. It's over. Considered to be burned. In other words, your destination is with those fallen angels and Satan in the lake of fire. That's the works of the spiritual dead. Now, the hidden things of Scripture are literally the things God hides from spiritual dead folks. Only those who are spiritually alive and matured, things are revealed. Amen. And we see here in the book of Daniel and Psalms, go to Daniel 2. Spiritual dead folks, things is hidden, the scripture. That's why they can never look at the scripture and see what we're talking about. Because God hides it from their minds. But only those who are spiritually alive and have grown through the teaching of God's word can look at the scripture and understand it. And the Holy Spirit is able to bring out those hidden interpretations. Here in the book of Daniel, second chapter, verse 19. Let us read. Then was read. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Stop right there. Daniel had doctrine in his soul. Daniel had doctrine in his soul. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And none of his people could give him the interpretation. And so he destined to kill every last one of them. Because <laughs> they were around there eating up his wine and drinking up his wine and eating up his fine food. Telling King, you is this and you that, but now you can't give no interpretation of the dream. Daniel Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to kill you. And that included Daniel too and his friends. But because Daniel had doctrine in his soul, God revealed the secret of the dream to him. And God, Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Verse 20 says, Daniel answered, read, and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he did change the times and the season. He removed kings and set it up kings. He gave it wisdom unto the wise and knowledge that no understand. Stop right there. God removed presidents. Amen. And he set up presidents. And every Christian should be praying that God will give us a leader after his own heart. Amen. This is what we should be going in prayer for. Whenever election to be praying for, Lord, give us the right president after his heart. Verse 22, he revealed and read. The things he knew it in the darkness and light dwelling here. Stop right there. Underline darkness. What does that mean here? In other words, he revealed it to deep the secret things. He knew it. What is in the darkness? That's talking about the minds of unbelievers. God knows what's in the mind of unbelievers. Of course he does. He created them. Knew all about them. 
He knows what's in the mind of everybody, not just uh, the unbelievers, but believers as well. He checks the reins daily. So now he knows what's in the darkness, the minds of unbelievers. And then here's Daniel says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. In other words, they went in prayer, and they asked the Lord for the answer. And God gave them the answer. Go to Psalms uh, 25. God gave them the answer. So now, uh, it's important, whatever we uh, desire, is to take it to the Lord. Whatever answer that we're looking for, first of all, one has to be in fellowship, walking right with God. When you're walking right with God, then you can go and ask God for whatever you need to ask him, and God will reveal it to you when you fit the bill, when you qualify, and your qualification is through spiritual growth. Here, verse 12, of chapter 25 of the book of Psalms. Let us read. What man read? What man is he that feareth? Stop right there. Underline fear. What man is he that obeyeth the Lord? That's a question. Him. Underline him. That's God shall he teach. Him shall God teach he. God. In other words, God is going to teach you, the Holy Spirit, in the way that he should choose. In other words, I tell everybody that asks me different questions, I say, let God make the choice. Consult God. Let him make the choice. His soul shall dwell at ease. In other words, I do ease. His soul shall prosper. And his seed, his children, shall be a blessing to him. In other words, his seed shall inherit the earth. That means his children should be a blessing. You know, it's nice when children can be a blessing to you and not a problem. Amen. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go. And the way you train up a child is through God's word. One of the greatest gifts a parent can give to their children is an understanding of God's word to make sure they have understanding and they're walking right with God. Amen. That is one of the greatest things that you can give and that's what the Bible says and you teach your children and your grandchildren to love the Lord. See, we can give all kind of gifts and everything else to children. They ain't going to play with them for a while and throw them down. Amen. And forget about them or tear them up. But when you help them to get an understanding of the plan of God and they become rooted. That's one of the greatest gifts you can pass on to uh, your child or your grandchild. Verse 14 says, the secret of the Lord is with them that what obey him, respect him, walk in right with him. And he will show them his covenant. In other words, God will reveal things to you. That's with the spiritually matured individual. Now, outline two is deliverance from spiritual death. It's through Christ. No other way. Deliverance from spiritual death is through Jesus Christ. And we have a reference in John 5, 20 through 24 and 25. That's the only way a person can be delivered from spiritual death. It's through Jesus Christ, no other way. Verse 24 and 25. Let us read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In other words, you have passed from spiritual death unto spiritual life. 
Amen. So now, a person that's born into this world, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have passed from spiritual death to spiritual life. Verse 25, verily, verily read. Verily, fair I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear it shall live. Amen. The spiritual dead shall hear the word. And they that hear it and believe <coughs> shall live. In other words, they're going to become spiritually alive. We have another reference, Ephesians 2, 5, turn to it. Spiritual death, deliverance from spiritual death is through Jesus Christ. Let us read. Even when, read. Even when we were dead in sins, quicken us together with Christ by grace, yes, say amen. So now even when we were spiritually dead, God quickened us together so he lets us know that he had you in mind before the world was ever created. Had you in mind. See, we're not, we didn't accept Christ by accident. He chose us. So now deliverance from spiritual death. God has put out a call to arise from spiritual death to spiritual life. God has called you. And he's calling everybody to arise from spiritual death. We are already in the book of Ephesians. Go to the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 14 through 18. God is calling us to rise up. Amen. Amen. Not just those unbelievers, but he's also talking to believers who have fell by the wayside, who are spiritually dead. Amen. Verse 14, let us read. Wherefore read. He said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. Wake up. Arise. There's a call. God is calling every last person who would hear and heed his words. Verse 15, see the end read. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the day is evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. In other words, the will of the, God, of the Lord is God's will for uh, every last one of us to be filled with the Spirit, to be Spirit-led. Amen. And see, when you focus your mind solely on God in every aspect, no matter how big or how small it may be, when you focus your thought patterns, amen, it becomes God. Amen. You become occupied with Christ. You are focusing on how God thinks and what he feels about you and you doing what's right before the Lord. You start walking right before God when your eyes is on him. He says, see then that ye walk circumspectively, not as fools. See, fools don't care how they walking before the Lord. Fools do not care at all. Amen. They don't care what God thinks. Amen. And let alone trying to do what God say. See, that's a, that's a person who's a fool. See, you redeem the time by the